I don't know how the walls could fall down from Jericho when they never had any walls. But we don't let things like that bother us. But what I was referring to about the Mayan calendar, 2012, I mean, do you I know, think... 2012, I know. Uh, I don't know what that's going to bring, but I got a feeling it's going it's to... Something is very big is going to happen in 2010 to 2012. We're already in the... What is it? The age of the fifth sun now? I think, I think that's so. what they call it. That all of that kind of stuff, I think, is very, very legitimate. I don't, I'm not a world's foremost authority on it, but I know enough about it to know it's very legitimate. Yes. Uh, hold on a second. They want to do a quick tape, uh, tape oh, change. Okay. So then I got my two questions. I'll drink to that. Okay. <laughs> Incidentally, I did a <clears throat> television, uh, I've done quite a few here lately. I did uh, a piece for uh, Discovery Channel, I did one for Learning Channel, I did one for Arts and Entertainment, <clears throat> I did one for, C uh, for CBS. Uh, okay, we're rolling. Oh, okay. All right. Uh, I was just going to tell you something that happened on that, on that, on well, go that ahead, then I'll ask occasion questions. when I was working for... Uh, that kind of points up what the what the uh, networks are all about. Um, well, let me let me just tell you very quickly. I, I was I was uh, hired to do three of a four-part series. The fourth one uh, I didn't work on, but the but the three I did, and the fourth one was um, or the one I did not work on. You may have heard of it, heard about it. It's called the Incredible Discovery of Noah's Ark on CBS. Uh, I did not work on that one. That was the third in the series. The first two was the um, Ancient Mysteries of the World Part 1 on CBS and Ancient Mysteries of the World Part 2. Then came the, this, 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 the Incredible Discovery of Noah's Ark and then came the fourth one which is uh, Ancient Mysteries of the World in which Anthony Hilda was on that one with me. But the third one in line, I did not work on happily because uh, there were a lot of lawsuits and a lot of bad blood because of that. Because of that, and the company, the production company out of uh, Utah, went broke because of it. Mm. Because of the lawsuits, and the reason why is because a lot of atheists and agnostics and humanist organizations and people around the country got really upset because. Uh, CBS did not put a disclaimer saying that this is just entertainment. We didn't really find Noah's Ark. I mean, but they didn't do that. They said the incredible discovery of Noah's Ark. And they went on to show that here's the pictures of Noah's Ark. And here's, and it was so ludicrous. It was so incredibly ludicrous. I, I, I was laughing at it. It showed the, the guy taking a picture of Noah's Ark. And then it said, but he fell off the, 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 the ledge and, and they couldn't find him because he died in the snow. And, uh, and so that's why they don't have the camera in the original picture. And I'm thinking, well, if you don't have the original picture, what the hell are we looking at then? <laughs> you know? And well, what are we looking at if, if you don't have the original picture? <laughs> and so consequently, I was called back to work on the fourth one. And so I asked the field director, I asked the field director, I said, did you guys, uh, you guys got a, a lot of heat from that last one you did on the incredible discovery of Noah's Ark? He said, yeah, a lot of lawsuits and a lot of stuff. And, uh, and I said, did you guys really find Noah's Ark? And he said, come on, this is America. You don't have to be intelligent here. This is just entertainment. <laughs> you know, I mean, this is America, my God. This is not Europe. You know, you don't have to be intelligent here. You just tell the people what they want to hear. And I thought, well, that's, that's, you know, that was over dinner with the whole crew. And I, I asked him, you really find, he said, come on. We tell the people what they want to hear. This is CBS. It's just the money. It's just, it's just a business, okay? We tell people what they want to hear. So that tells you something about uh, CBS and the rest of them. Well, it's Hollywood. Touche. <laughs> so what's your question? Oh, okay. My old friend, my good friend. Um, first one, I want to make a note about Darth Vader. He's also Lord of Sith, S-I-T-H. Hmm. Good. So I, I follow the Star Wars stuff, so I yeah. figured I'd want to give you that pointer there. Throw that one in, okay. Right. So it's documented now. Uh, my first question is uh, regarding um, Isis Ra Elohim. Yeah, El. 
Yeah, Isis yeah, Ra El. El. Okay. Isis was a feminine principle of wisdom in Egypt, spelled I-S-I-S, -I -S, Isis. Then the coming of one of the pharaohs changed the worship of Isis to the worship of Amun-Re, mm -hmm. Amen-Ra, mm -hmm. which is in incidentally why Christians still say Amen at the end of their prayer, because they're sending a prayer through God's son, Amen-Re, Amun-Ra, mm -hmm. Amen. And consequently, when the, when the Phoenician Canaanites, <clears throat> when the Hebrews went in north into Palestine, they encountered a people that were already there for thousands of years. They were called Palestinians, which was very clever. I mean, that's where you would expect to find Palestinians is in Palestine. And so when they went into Palestine, uh, they, they had already learned all the wisdom and the, and the religious teachings of Isis, spelled I-S-I-S, then they learn the new concept of the new religion of Amun-Re, R-A, and now they encounter the Palestinians, and the Palestinians' god was El, the planet Saturn, L, E-L. Consequently, the religion grew out of Isis, Ra, El, I-S-R-A-E-L. Israel is nothing more than Isis, Ra, and El. Consequently, there's nothing holy about Israel. And why is Israel, why is Jerusalem called the holy city? The holy city is because, yeah, they're full of holes. The holy city is because every kind of licentious, filthy, degenerate religion that can come into the mind of men has been practiced there. Everything from child sacrifice, pornography, violence, human sacrifice, I don't care how filthy it is or how dirty it is, they were doing it in Jerusalem. And that's why symbolically God's Son, the light of the world, would say to Jerusalem, 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 killer of the prophets and stoner of those sent to you. Anything that is truly enlightened and intelligent wouldn't have a damn thing to do with you. All you do is child sacrifice, pornography, violence, money grubbing, money changers. Mm -hmm. The whole thing was filthy from day one. There ain't nothing holy in Jerusalem. Ain't never been nothing holy in Jerusalem, and there's nothing going to be holy in Jerusalem, Salt Lake City, Rome, or any place else. Religion is nothing more than manipulation of the human mind. There is a powerful spiritual dynamics to the universe, but unhappily most Americans haven't got into faint, the faintest idea about any of that. And I think that that's what's coming. I think there's going to come a time when we're going to start, start thinking in terms of, wait a minute, let's back up and look at this all over again. Who are we really, and what is astrology, and what is the Bible, and who really wrote it? And that's what I'm hoping to do, to be able to enlighten people that there's something else going on we haven't been told. Yes, okay. what else? And the final thing is, um, a friend of mine wanted me to ask you, uh, where, where does the, what is the Jesus, the oil Christ um, story actually fit then? What is the, um, or who is Jesus Christ to you, or is your understanding of these things? Well, Christ is merely oil, and oil was used uh, to anoint kings and princes and all of the ancient world. All the ancient world always uh, anointed their kings and rulers and princes with oil. They poured it in the head of the kings and princes, and they were, therefore you were anointed. The word anoint was a word that was used in relation to sex. And so the king always represented the penis head. The king was always the big cock in town. He was the major penis head. He was the major man. He represented the male fertility. And all the women belonged to him. He was the king. So he represented the male phallic. And in the ancient world, they always lubricated the head of the male phallic in sex. So that's why you would anoint the head of the king. The head of the king represents the head of the penis because the whole concept of man ruling is a sexual thing. It's been around for thousands of years, the war between male and female. That's a war going on between male and female. And in the patriarchal system of things, the king represented the male phallic. And we got a bunch of Peter heads still running in Washington, D.C. They're all a bunch of penis heads. They think with their, with their, with their penis. They think with their penis. 
That's all they are. That's all, you know, Bill Clinton, he thinks he's the only one. That whole, that whole thing is filthy. It's nothing more than sex and power. We're talking about mafia, sex, drugs, entertainment, 